Hey, it's me, Pastor Mike, and I have some really exciting news to share. Some incredibly generous friends of Time of Grace have offered a $400,000 challenge grant. That means that your financial gift will go twice as far in helping us connect more people to the unfailing love of Jesus. And when you support this challenge grant, we would love to send you our brand new 11-week prayer journal. It's called God's Love is Forever. A combination of devotions from God's sacred word and guided prayers, this will connect you to the true belief that no matter what happens in life, God's love will always be there. I had a really good message for you today. Uh, maybe you caught the past tense. I, I had one. <laughs> We've been talking in this series about grumbling and gratitude and God. And I thought I would end these messages with one of my favorite passages on gratitude. It's honestly a classic in the Bible. James 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. That was the message I wanted to preach to you. Uh, in fact, as a pastor, I even had a, a cheesy little rhyme to go with it. I, I was going to have you fill in the blanks and <laughs> write this down, that everything you love comes from above. <laughs> I was going to preach that. But uh, then I made a mistake. My mistake was in preparing James 1 verse 17, I also read James 1 verse 16, which says this. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. In my Bible, the heading for James chapter 1 is trials and temptations. And I won't read the whole thing to you, but James talks about trials of many kinds and the testing of your faith and not doubting God and not being double-minded and kind of flip-flopping what you believe about God. He talked about trial again and testing again and tempting again, that we shouldn't believe that God is tempting us. And then finally, finally, he gets to these words, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above. And so I had one of those moments, maybe you've had this before too, where you thought you knew what a Bible passage meant, but then when you read it, and you read what's around it, you had to question your own interpretation. And so I, I had to start over. That good, happy, cheery Christian message about gratitude and counting our blessings, that had to go out the door. But in the end, I wasn't too disappointed. And in the end, I think you're going to be glad that you're tuning in today. Because the message that James in context is preaching is for those of us who have been through pain. And specifically those of you who have been through pain that lasts. If you've lived with chronic pain, with pain that shows up on a Monday and is back on a Tuesday and then returns on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, this is the chapter for your faith. As a pastor here, as a guy who gets to hear the stories of lots and lots of dear brothers and sisters, I, I know that pain is a reality for many of you. Now, lots of you in your Christian life have, have felt a lot like Job. You remember that story from the Old Testament? Uh, Job is this really good, grateful, and godly man. He, he has a good life and he praises God, but then, then the pain comes. And Job, because he's a a good man of faith, even in the midst of the pain, he praises God. But then the pain gets worse. But because Job is not your average believer, even in the midst of intense pain, he keeps on praising God. Ah, but then. Then the pain doesn't go away. Then Job starts to doubt. And he gets double-minded. And he feels like God is testing him, maybe even tempting him. He wants to bring God into court. It wasn't the pain that was the problem for Job. It was the pain that persisted. That's what deceived him. And that's what tricked him. And maybe you get that. According to the CDC, 
there are currently about 50 million Americans who live with chronic pain. And by chronic pain, they mean the pain that you feel for most days of the week for months at a time. So for those of you who live with headaches or migraines, you know, you're reaching for the Aleve this day and that day and then this day again. For those of you who have severe food allergies or GI issues and your, your stomach just doesn't feel good and you're nauseous on this day and then that day and then another day. For those of you who have bad ankles or, or knees or a bad back, arthritis in your hands, and just pain, pain isn't like the, the mailman who knocks on your door or the Amazon guy who drops off a box and then leaves. It's this roommate that you didn't invite that brings all of his stuff and just makes your home, your life, worse. And what's sobering about this CTC's statistic is that if 50 million Americans, one in five American adults, lives with chronic pain, I think, I think they were only counting physical pain. And if we added to that 50 million, all of you who are dealing with financial pain or emotional pain or relational pain, if you're on disability or, or living paycheck to paycheck and you're, you're just afraid that one more medical bill or a car accident or, or something breaking is going to break you. If you're estranged from your sister or your son or your dad and just day after day you, you live with the fact that you don't have this happy functional nuclear family. It's, it's, it's broken and it's hard. If you live with depression or anxiety, if you're in a marriage that just feels stuck, I mean, imagine if we added the chronic, painful situations that people lived with. It wouldn't be one in five, would it? It'd be one in three, one, one in two. Lots of us have felt like Job. And we can praise God on day one of the pain and maybe on day three or seven, but when it's day 107, day 2003, that, that's the test, right? And so if you're there right now, if you've been there, if you know and love a dear brother and sister who is there, here's what James would say to you. He would say in verse 16, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. You can hear his heart, right? My dear brothers and sisters, I, I love you. We're, we're family through faith in Jesus. So don't be deceived. I know you're hurting and I know you prayed. You prayed a hundred days in a row for this to change and it hasn't, but don't be deceived. Don't be lied to. Don't give up your faith. The things you used to believe when the sun was shining, don't believe now that it's been raining for a hundred straight days. Essentially, James is trying to get you to not believe this lie. I keep this scroll in my office. Uh, an artist friend of mine took a lighter to it to make it look like it came from hell, hell itself. Because on this scroll are the three words that will change your life for the worse. These three words are what the devil has been using to deceive people in James's day, in Job's day, and in our day today. And if you're living with chronic pain, you might have been tempted by these words too. The scroll says, God's not good. It's a pretty logical lie to believe though, isn't it? How could God be good if he lets his own kid, his supposedly beloved son and the daughter he delights in live like that day after, how can he know about that? And how can he have the power to fix that and still be a good God? And so the devil comes at us, right? With this deception. Oh, oh, I know you sang it when you were a little kid, but how can God be good? But let me think of it. If you were a parent and your baby girl couldn't sleep because her stomach was so upset and you had the power, it wouldn't cost you anything. It would be easy for you, like turning off her light switch to fix that pain. What kind of parent would you be if you didn't? But God could. God can. And yet he doesn't. Maybe God's not good. 
Or if your best friend had depression and it was just like this journey and there was medication and there was ups and there was downs and suicidal, maybe he thought about it, maybe he even uh, attempted it and you could fix that. Like, like that chemical imbalance in his brain, what's happening in his heart and mind, you could push a button in a millisecond and it would all be over. What kind of friend would you be if you didn't? You see, this is what the devil does. He whispers that deception when pain sticks around. When our suffering is chronic, when, when we went to church and we read the Bible and we tried, we reached out to God, we called upon him in the day of trouble, we cast our anxiety on him and then nothing. And James gets that. James says this, quote, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. If you're living with pain or, or love someone who is, I think in this one verse, James gives us three things to remember to resist that deception. If you're taking notes at home, I'd love for you to write these down that they're worth remembering. Here's the first one. According to James, everything good is from God. He says here, every good and perfect gift is from above. So, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, to help you not be deceived, I want to give you a challenge. Uh, just this week, I want you to try to list, before you fall asleep, blessings from A to Z. So when your head hits the pillow, before you turn off that light, I want you to think A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z of blessings that God gave you, good and perfect gifts from just that day. It might be fresh air that you breathe. It might be that breakfast sandwich you had for lunch with, with sausage. You could count that as the S too. <laughs> it might be your cat that cuddled up on the couch while you watched Netflix. Uh, it might be D, your, your daughter who texted, asked, Mom, how you doing? It might be the empathy of a friend or a coworker who noticed that you were stressed. Go A through Z, 26 blessings in one day, and it will help your heart not be deceived. And you can put into practice James's words, my dear brothers and sisters, every good and perfect gift is from above. So point number one, everything good is from God. Here's point number two, everything good is a gift. Did you catch that word in James's teaching? He says, every good and perfect gift is from above. Actually, in James' original Greek, he used the word twice. He said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, which, which makes this deceptive lie even less believable. Because those A to Z blessings that you and I are thinking of, they're not just good things. According to James, they are good gifts. Do you know the difference between a gift and a thing? A gift is a thing that you don't deserve. <laughs> but someone who is good just decides to give. All right, so if you're working at your job, it, it's payday. Uh, the boss hands you a check and says, hey, I have a, a gift for you. You say, oh, a bonus? A year-end gift? <laughs> what is this? He says, well, no, it's your paycheck. I said, no, no, that's a thing. <laughs> that's a good thing, but that's not a gift. I worked for that. No, a gift is more like what happens on your birthday and on Christmas. Do you know what your birthday and Christmas have in common? Those are the two days when you are most likely to get something good that you deserved nothing to get. You remember the story? In a manure-scented cave in the first century to a family that was dead broke from a dinky town at a time in history where there was no air conditioning, no heat, no motors, and no Netflix. <laughs> and Jesus left behind all the glories of heaven to come to this broken world. And now, 2,000 years later, what do we do? <laughs> we get gifts. <laughs> Little kids make lists of all the things that people should buy them because Jesus gave up all of that. That does not make sense. 
which is what makes it a gift, right? Hey, at Christmas time, I don't deserve anything. Jesus deserves everything. You don't deserve anything because of his birth or what he did. So if you get something, it's a gift. And here, according to James, it's not just your birthday things or your Christmas things. It's everything. He says every good and perfect gift is from above. The air we breathe, well, we don't deserve that. The breakfast sandwich we ate, we don't deserve that. The beauties of creation, a cat, a dog, the empathy of a friend, God himself, Jesus, the cross, forgiveness, every spiritual thing, every physical thing, every emotional thing, every relational thing. James is saying to us, all of it's a gift. Do you see how that could help you when you're living with chronic pain? You're hurting again. You're anxious again. Your, your fingers just ache again and the devil tries to tempt you. God's not good. And then you turn and you look at everything good in your life, everything that you love and realize, I didn't deserve any of it. Not a single blessing should be mine. But my father, the one in heaven, did not let that stop him. His generous, gracious, loving, and good heart decided to give all of that to me. In fact, if that doesn't sink in, uh, think about it this way. How many times have you and I sinned against God? I, I don't know that number. A lot. <laughs> have you ever gotten a birthday gift from someone that you've sinned against constantly? Like if there's that person in your family that you've really hurt and, and now they keep their distance or someone at work that you just kind of clash with, <laughs> you know, there's Chuck from the office. Say, Chuck, yeah, I know you don't like me. I think you kind of hate me, but I came up with a birthday list. <laughs> no, 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 never, right? We, we would not expect gifts from our enemies, especially those that we have deeply hurt. So don't think about God. Even if I don't get why he doesn't push the button or flip the switch and end your pain, he, he has to be good. We, we've sinned against him millions of times and he's turned around and given us millions of gifts. So don't be deceived. My dear brothers and sisters, I, I know you're still living with the depression, with the back pain, with the allergies, with the issues, but don't be deceived. Every good and perfect gift is from above. And if those two things weren't enough to protect you from the deception, James has one last thing he wants you to know. First, he said everything good is from God. Second, he said everything good is a gift. And now finally, he said everything good goes except for God. He said it this way, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Oh, that, that is such a powerful word. If I wanted to protect you from this lie, I would, I would want you to know this. Everything changes. Anything good, everything perfect in your life can change. One accident, one event, one pandemic, the death of the person you love most in this world, all of it can go. We can lose our children, our friendships, our health. One just normal visit to the doctor can find cancer and life can change dramatically. Like you need to know this. In this world, everything is temporary, everything. All the good gifts from A to Z, they are not guaranteed. And if you remember that, you'll be grateful when they're there. I cannot assume that my wife and I will hold hands and die on the same day at age 90. I could lose her today. And so if Kim is here today, thank, thank you, God. I, I could lose my job today. 
So the fact that I'm here with an open Bible and this is what I do and I'm preaching to you that this might not be here next year or next week, but it's here today. Thank you, God. Now, people get hit by drunk drivers every day. They, they get in accidents that are not their fault. So if I can drive from church back to home, thank you, God. The shadows shift. Life changes. Everything is meaningless, King Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes. So if anything good is happening in your life, praise the grace of God. One day it's going to go. So if it hasn't yet, God is so good. And through it all, James wants you to know, God won't go. In fact, the reason that Jesus came down from heaven, the good and perfect gift that came from above, was so that you and I would have something that would never change. God. Jesus gave his life up on the cross. He was willing to to give up the glory and the honor and the pleasure of heaven so that through his blood, through his death, and through his resurrection, through faith in him, that you could have a God who would not change, who would never leave you and never forsake you. So when you're living with chronic pain, God is still right there. So when you're dealing with another medical visit, God is still right there. God himself, who is better than every good and perfect gift, he is the definition of goodness and perfection. He would be right there. So you and I could learn to say with King David, I will fear no evil. I might have drama in my life. I might have enemies here. I might be in the valley of the shadow of death, but you're with me. I will not be afraid. You've called me by name. You've made a commitment never to abandon me or forsake me, even if my mother and father do. So yeah, God, I'm I'm hurting again. And, And yes, I'm still asking you to end my pain, but even if you don't, I'm so grateful that you're here. So, put those three things together. Everything good, A to Z in your life, is from God. And all of those things from A to Z are a gift that we don't deserve. And finally, even though everything might go today or tomorrow, we will always have God through the blood, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. That's what Marilyn knows. Uh, Some of you know here at our church, uh, I'm Pastor Mike, and my colleague is Pastor Michael because we like to make it confusing. (laughs) Well, the other day I was talking to Pastor Michael and asking him about the most grateful person he knows. Like who out of all the dear brothers and sisters that he does life with, who grumbles the least and expresses the most gratitude? And he instantly answered, my mom. And as he told me the story, and uh, his mom gave me permission to share this, I found out that his mother, Marilyn, lives with chronic pain. In fact, just after Pastor Michael told me this, I saw Marilyn with her walker coming into church. She one time said, this is not how I envisioned my retirement. You put in all these years. You work so hard. You raise the kids. And now you're going to retire, right? And you're going to travel and you're going to enjoy life and wealth. But that good gift went. And now she hurts a lot. But Pastor Michael said this. Sometimes when his mom is really in a lot of pain and she's kind of wincing and and she's right to the edge of of grumbling or maybe doubting the goodness of God, he, he said that she says this, quote, but God is good. I love that. I'm not feeling good today, but God is good. If he gave me you, my family, if he gave me this day, if he gave me his son, the good and perfect gift from heaven, then God must be good. That dear sister did not get deceived even in the pain because she knew this truth. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I I pray that you are just like her. This side of heaven, we will have trouble. And some of us will have chronic trouble. But even in the midst of the trouble, there is this truth that God is good. And his son, his son is the proof. Let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, I, I haven't been there just yet. 
And I love you, I, I like you, I trust you, I respect you, but the, the truth is I haven't been tested like some of my brothers and sisters have. So I, I pray boldly today for wisdom for them. Uh, we do not want to be double-minded and think you're, you're good when life is good and think you're bad when life is bad. We want to be consistent just like you are with us. So God, plant this truth deep in our heart. Give your Holy Spirit when we're under demonic attack. Help us, as you say in the New Testament, to resist the devil. Cause him to flee from us, to, to stop with the deception and lies so that we believe that you're good and your son is the proof. I thank you, God, for hearing this prayer. The fact that we can pray to, to God is proof that you're good. The fact that you listen is proof that you're good. And the fact that you will answer in the right way at the right time is proof that you're good. We love you, God. We give thanks to the Lord for you are good. And your mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Such a powerful message today from Pastor Mike that God is good and his love is real even when we're struggling with chronic pain. This Christmas season, some generous friends of Time of Grace have offered a $400,000 challenge grant. That means your gift goes twice as far. And as a special thank you, we'd love to send you this 11-week prayer journal, God's Love is Forever. We only have a limited number of copies, so request yours today. Hey, it's me, Pastor Mike, and I have some really exciting news to share. Some incredibly generous friends of Time of Grace have offered a $400,000 challenge grant. That means that your financial gift will go twice as far in helping us connect more people to the unfailing love of Jesus. And when you support this challenge grant, we would love to send you our brand new 11-week prayer journal. It's called God's Love is Forever. A combination of devotions from God's sacred word and guided prayers, this will connect you to the true belief that no matter what happens in life, God's love will always be there. We do have a limited number of God's love is forever. Request your copy while supplies last. You can call us at 800-661-3311, visit timeofgrace.org, or write us at P.O. Box 301, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53201. Do you ever wonder if you're saved? Or what saved even means? Or what God is like? Or what Jesus did? Some people are embarrassed to ask these really basic questions, but please don't be. They're the most important questions you could ever ask. And that's why I want to give you a brand new copy of this little book I wrote called The Basics. Uh, you can get your paper copy or your digital copy or your audio copy or your video version just by going to timeofgrace.org slash The Basics. Time of Grace doesn't end here. Visit timeofgrace.org and explore encouraging resources or sign up for our daily email and have everything delivered right to your inbox. Like our Grace Moments devotions, Grace Talks devotional videos, blog, and podcasts. Follow us on social media where you'll find a supportive Christian community. Do you need prayer? Contact us and let us know what's on your heart. Thank you so much for your support. See you next week on Time of Grace.